Hey guys, what's up? My name is Tusker, and welcome to my ultimate guide for reworked Bastion in Overwatch 2. Alright, I know you guys have been asking for this video for a long time, but as you all know, Bastion got fucking redacted from the game for like a literal eternity, so none of us could play him, and I couldn't get any footage for this video. Yeah, great. Thanks, Blizzard. But okay, I digress. I'm really glad Bastion is finally back, and I can finally bring you guys this video. Okay, but first, a little bit about me real quick. I've been playing Overwatch since Beta Overwatch 1, and I've played a lot of Bastion. He's my favorite hero, and I one-tricked him to like high diamond at one point, but then I stopped and decided to focus on getting top 500 on support instead. Okay, yeah, but who cares? We're talking about Bastion here. I'm here to give you an in-depth guide on what everyone thinks is the easiest hero in the game. But in my totally non-biased opinion, Bastion is actually one of the harder heroes to play. He now has a lot more skill expression when it comes to things like aiming and recon, sticky jumping, and timing your engages in assault form. So to help you guys master all these aspects of Bastion, I split this video into parts, so feel free to skip around to whatever you need help with. First, we're going to go over aim training, then positioning and how to flank, then we're going to talk about how to use each of Bastion's abilities to their fullest, and then finally finish it off with hero matchups and synergies. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so out of the three types of aim, flicking, tracking, and projectile, Bastion is pretty much all tracking with a little bit of projectile on his right click. You need to have good tracking to get value out of Assault Form, and especially Recon. With that tight bullet spread, you really gotta be like a laser beam. Your aim is always gonna gradually improve as you play, but if you really want to speed up the process, I have a few ways of practicing tracking. A real simple one is to go into the training range and start strafing side to side in front of a bot like this. What you want to do is keep your crosshair centered on the bot's eye as best you can. You can challenge yourself by strafing tighter and closer to the bot, or dial it down by doing wide strafes back here, like this. This is a great way to warm up your aim and get your tracking synced in with your own movement. So if you're too pro for that stuff, you can always access these amazing custom workshop maps built right into Overwatch. One of my favorites is called KK49M. Simply input that code right into this part here in the custom game menu, and now you have full access to a custom firing range with fast arcing targets for you to track. Doing this is really going to give you smooth tracking, and you can even try hitting air shots with your sticky bump too. Okay, let's move on to positioning. Positioning is probably the hardest part about playing Bastion. Bastion relies a lot on his positioning because of his low mobility as a DPS, especially in Assault form. One thing to keep in mind while you're playing Bastion is that you are an absolute unit. In other words, your hitbox is fucking gigantic, and when you find yourself out in the open, most of the time, you're going to get deleted really fast because even though you have the hitbox of a tank, you don't have the health pool of one. So with your positioning, you always want to be playing around some kind of natural cover. Always make sure you're playing around a corner or a wall when poking so you can fall back and get heals. You still should be swinging out to deal damage, but just remember that the further out in the open you are, the riskier it is. Just like cover, high ground is also extremely important on Bastion. Positioning on high ground is awesome for multiple reasons. First. Enemies have a harder time reaching you, which gives you more time to gun them down as they try to approach. Second, you usually get a huge view of the battlefield and are able to lock down a larger area. And most importantly, peeking over a ledge is yet another way to hide your massive hitbox. Enemies below will barely get an angle on your head peeking over the edge of the ledge while you're able to see them entirely. You want to be abusing high ground whenever you can, which is especially easy now due to your ability to sticky jump. Now when the team fight starts breaking out, Bastion has two main ways of positioning. The first and default option is to play with your team and dish out big damage into the enemy frontline. Although the new rework definitely gives Bastion a better solo playstyle, he still is tremendously more powerful when he's working with his team. Getting shields and heals means that you'll be able to go more aggressive and do more damage. And the threat of your damage output will also act as appeal for your supports. Staying grouped up in your backline means dive heroes are going to have to think twice about diving into a Bastion who's ready to turret up and mow them down as soon as they go in. When positioning normally like this, you want to be holding long sight lines and open areas where you'll be able to shred the enemy team as they try to approach you. Teams will simply not be able to brute force their way forward without taking a crap ton of damage from you, and by the time the teams start clashing, you'll have a massive advantage. On the other hand, flanking on Bastion is insanely powerful, especially with this new rework. It's definitely the riskier way to play, but doing it successfully can pay off big time. You want to think about flanking when your team just can't seem to get their foot out of the door and you need to find picks to open up the game. Lots of factors go into pulling off a successful flank. First, you want to identify an off-angle route to take and then stop poking and sneak behind the enemy. You can even use your new mobility to take certain pathways around the map. 
One thing to note is that flanking doesn't necessarily mean crouch walking around the edge of the map and showing up behind the entire enemy team. Flanking also includes setting up on an off angle or taking a position that the enemies won't expect. All that matters is the enemy is unaware of your positioning and you get the jump on them. In that sense, Bastion is kind of like a Widowmaker. The enemy is always going to keep tabs on where you're positioned because you're a massive threat, but you lack the mobility to quickly change positions. So if the enemy knows where you are, they're going to have a much easier time avoiding your damage. Smart enemies just simply will not push recklessly into the space that you're contesting. That's why it's important to always keep your positioning unpredictable and to keep the enemy guessing. Okay, so you're now committed to a flank. What now? If you manage to get this far, you still need to make sure that your team is engaging from the front and you're pinching them from an off angle. If you show up as the only threat, you're going to get a bunch of players turning around and we're going to shut you down instantly. So make sure that you're coordinating your flank with your team's engage and going in once the enemies are distracted first. Finally, all that's left to do is to frag out and mow down the enemy team. You should have more than enough damage to take out multiple enemies before they even knew it hit them. Now let's move on to how to effectively use each of Bastion's new abilities. Most of the guide up to this point has actually been pretty standard Bastion fundamentals that also apply to him in Overwatch 1, but this is where some of you returning Bastion mains might find some insight on how to play him after his rework. First, let's go over Bastion's bread and butter, Recon and Assault, and how to use each configuration. Bastion's Recon mode got his damage increased from 20 to 25. His spread got completely removed so it's like a laser beam now, but his fire rate got reduced from 8 shots per second down to 5. His ammo also got reduced from 35 to 25. What these changes mean is that Bastion's recon mode is harder to use, but I believe it's actually a lot stronger. You now dish out some serious poke damage at range, and with good aim, securing kills is a lot easier now without the spread. However, it could be a lot worse in close range engagements, so try to keep your distance if you're just poking around in recon mode, and play safe if you don't have your other abilities to help you out in a one on one fight. Configuration Sentry has been renamed to Configuration Assault, and you can now move in turret form, a 35% movement speed penalty. They also kept the Iron Cloud passive at 20% damage reduction, and it's now a cooldown ability which lasts for 6 seconds and goes on cooldown for 12 seconds afterwards. He no longer has tightening spread as you fire, and they reduce his damage per bullet from 15 to 12. Bastion now has unlimited ammo in Assault form, and can shoot for as long as the ability lasts. So in comparison to other heroes, Bastion is pretty much a pea shooter in just his recon form, but he's an absolute beast in Assault form. You need to kind of, like, embrace this shift from powerful to weak, by really playing around your Assault Form and making sure every use of it gets value. Timing the activation of Assault Form is key. The best time to activate it would be at the start of an engagement. If you're trying to hold defensively, you want to use your insane damage output to weaken the enemies as they try to push on your team. If you activate it too early, the enemies are just going to wait you out and leave you powerless during the team fight. But if you activate it too late, the enemies are already going to be on top of you and you're going to get shut down. The key is to use Assault Form right when you see the enemies have left cover and are too far out to make it back to safety before you can melt them down. On attack, you can engage with Assault Form offensively to push back the front line with your own tank. Another thing you have to keep in mind when timing the activation of your Assault Form is the enemy cooldowns that can shut you down. If there are threatening abilities such as a Roadhog Hook, a full defense matrix, Sleep Dart, or anything else the enemy can use to run away from you, it's best to hold your Assault Form until it's safe to go aggressive. Another overlooked part about Bastion's kit is just how tanky he can be in Assault Form. The 20% damage reduction from Ironclad while Transform can actually stack along with the innate 100 points of armor that Bastion has as a part of his health pool, which gives him an additional 30% damage reduction when his armor hasn't been broken. Your tankiness in Assault Form compared to Recon can allow you to actually go super ham, so use it to make more aggressive plays, especially when you have the heals to keep your armor topped off. One thing you need to know is when to bail out of Assault Mode. Sometimes you just transform at a bad time. Like let's say you turn a corner but there's no enemies in sight, and you don't think you're going to get much value out of your 6 seconds of assault mode. You could stay in assault form and lay down suppressive fire to delay their push, but most of the time it's beneficial to just swap back to recon. Doing this puts the ability back on cooldown, which means you'll have it ready next time when you actually need it. You really don't want to be stuck without your assault mode when the fight starts breaking out. Bastion's self heal has been replaced with an A36 tactical grenade, or as I like to call it, the sticky bomb. The Sticky Bomb bounces off walls and can stick to enemies dealing up to 130 damage after a short delay. When I first heard that they were replacing Self Heal, I was pretty sad, but I actually ended up loving this new ability. It allows Bastion to do so many things and it really makes his kid feel complete. One of those things is of course the Sticky Jump, so let's go over how to properly Sticky Jump. What you want to do is aim it a little bit in front of you, 
walk forward onto it, and then jump at the same time the bomb explodes. A common mistake that a lot of people are making is jumping way too early and letting the bomb hit the midair. So the way it works in Overwatch is boosts will stack, so the force of your initial jump will combine with the explosion of the bomb, propelling you way further than if you were to just jump early and let the bomb hit you midair. Just look at the difference it makes here. This ledge in the training range is about the highest you can get consistently with a sticky jump. So look for these spots in game to get a massive positioning advantage. Another thing you can do with a sticky bomb is a flashy engage combo. Yes, there are flashy combos on Bastion now. It's called a transform jump. Nobody expects a literal sentry turret to come flying out of nowhere and mow down everyone in sight. So to do a transform jump, simply shoot your sticky onto the ground as normal, then immediately initiate your transformation just before jumping off the bomb as it explodes. This is the optimal way to execute the combo as you're overlapping the downtime of your transformation and waiting for the sticky to explode. And you're also giving yourself a huge burst of movement speed while transformed, which the enemies just won't expect. This is undoubtedly the strongest part of Bastion's new rework. The fact that you can be this mobile while having the highest damage output weapon in the game is just absurd. So take advantage of your aggressive capabilities as much as you can, because going for a transform jump at the right time can result in some seriously sick plays. The last thing about sticky jumping is always remembering to use it coming out of spawn. Using it for a quick boost to clear obstacles can get you back to the front lines way quicker. In terms of using the sticky bomb for damage, you really just want to be throwing it out whenever you can. Good ways to do this are to try to bounce the bomb into tight doorways and choke points, or aiming it right at the floor or on a corner so the splash damage hits everyone behind it. You can also preemptively shoot it into a flank route to check if there's any flankers coming. Landing a stick and following it up with a few shots will get you quick kills, and it's your main way of winning fights without assault mode. It's also a great tool to burst down enemies that are ambushing you. Just watch this clip of me absolutely obliterating this reaper who catches me off guard. You can also use it to ambush enemies yourself, as the burst damage of your grenade followed by the damage output of your assault form will melt any squishy before they can even react, and you can do this by firing your sticky bomb and then immediately switching to turret. Okay, finally, let's talk about Bastion's new ult, Configuration Artillery. This is nothing like his old ult, and it's probably the weirdest part of his new kit, but even though everyone thinks it's trash, it can still be a very powerful ultimate if used correctly. Bastion transforms and becomes stationary and is able to fire three mortar shots from the sky using a targeting system similar to Doomfist ult. The mortar shots do 600 damage in the center with sharp fall off damage, so unless the enemy somehow sit in the center of your ult while it takes years to come down, it's not going to do much damage. The mortar shots can be eaten, deflected, and they can also headshot, which is pretty funny. So let's talk about how to use it. Getting kills with the ult can be inconsistent because people are just going to move out of the way but it's much more important to zone out important areas and mess with the enemy positioning. The ult is way more effective when it's used as your team engages, because the enemies are going to have to scramble to dodge your ult while they're dealing with your team right on top of them. You can use the ult to cut off enemy escape routes, and the ult is also generally just useful for breaking up defensive setups and zoning off heroes in powerful positions. Let's say there's a Widow on high ground and nobody can get to him. Bam! Mortar shot. Let's say there's an Ana in the backline pumping out heals and you need somebody to contest her. Bam! Mortar shots. Ulting unsuspecting targets can surprisingly get you kills sometimes. I like to just drop an airstrike on an unsuspecting scoped in Ana or scoped in Widow, but this is generally ineffective against enemies who have ears, eyes, or legs. Your best chance to get a kill without any kind of setup is to use all three shots on an immobile target and try to cover as much area as possible. The combined splash damage from all three shots might just kill them, or you can get lucky and have them walk into it. One little tip you can do with the Bastion ult is jumping around a corner to ult. Old Bastion used to do this by transforming into sentry as he turned a corner, but now you can do the same thing in reverse. Just go from shooting to jumping backwards and ulting in midair. Now you're going to be safely behind a corner, and you won't have to waste time backing up. Also, we do not talk about the forbidden tech. Okay. What the fuck is that? All right, let's wrap this up by talking about hero matchups and synergies. This section is going to be going over heroes Bastion has a hard time against, as well as heroes he works well with. For the tanks, the only real counter to you is D.Va, with her ability to close the gap on you and her absurd 3 seconds of defense matrix. If she holds that on you while you're in assault form, she can basically nullify the entirety of your most powerful ability. Against D.Va, try to focus on poke and don't commit to anything too hard in assault form. In general though, you should always be focusing the enemy tank. It is absolutely your sole purpose in life to just alpha up and check their aggression. In Overwatch 2, it feels like tanks just do not die anymore, 
because of their insane sustain and damage mitigation abilities. However, Bastion is one of the only heroes in the game that can actually kill the tank. When you see the enemy tank getting aggressive and going out of position, and you know that they've used a lot of their resources, it's your sign to alpha up and melt through that tank. People still underestimate just how much damage Bastion does, and you can just straight up kill anyone who isn't respecting your assault form, even through damage mitigation abilities like Zarya Bubble, Doomfist Block, etc. In terms of synergies with tanks, Bastion works well with tanks who can offensively enable him and provide protection when going aggressive. Tanks like Rhyne, Zarya, Diva, and potentially Sigma can all reduce Bastion's reliance on natural cover and let him push out further than normal. In contrast to Overwatch 1, Bastion actually has decently skill-based matchups against other DPS heroes now. Still, Bastion is weak to long-range poke and ambushes. Characters with insane amounts of range poke like Hanzo, Widow, Ash, Genji, even Torbjorn can make taking aggressive angles really difficult. Against these kind of heroes, you want to minimize going for poke yourself and try to close the distance on them by playing around cover and or flanking. Ambush heroes like Reaper and Sombra can really mess you up if they get behind you unnoticed, so if you see one of them on the enemy team, just be hyper aware of them and try to save either of your abilities in case you need to win a close range fight against them. So as far as DPS duos go, you work really well with flankers such as Genji, Tracer, Sombra, etc. Where Bastion excels at doing tons of damage, he struggles at chasing and finishing those kills, so playing with another hero that can chase and finish those kills for you will make for a really scary DPS duo. The supports that you want to be aware of are Ana and Zen. Ana has a really easy time landing Sleep Dart on you, especially in Assault form with your massive hitbox and slow movement speed. And Zen can just do a ton of damage to you at range, so treat him like a sniper and don't go for poke as often. Instead, focus on out damaging their healing and DPS with your own, and shred down their frontline while staying out of their line of sight. Bastion works really well with single targeted healers such as Ana, Baptiste, Mercy, and maybe even Kiriko. These supports can help keep Bastion alive through focus fire and usually have abilities to either bail him out of trouble or help him go super aggressive. If you guys want to see another video going more in depth on hero matchups and special tips and tricks to counter every hero, let me know in the comments below. Or you could just wait for the Karku video to come out. But you know, whatever, up to you. Alrighty boys and girls, that's it for my ultimate Overwatch 2 Bastion guide. I hope that you found the information in this video to be helpful, and that you'll go on to become a better Bastion player because of it. If you liked the video, give it a like, and if you have any tips of your own, or if you think this entire guide was trash, feel free to leave a comment down below. I read every single one, so come down there and say hi. Subscribe to my channel for more Bastion and Overwatch 2 content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.